You are watching Melody Lane With me you're gonna have a great crafting time Oh, hello there everyone. It's Holly with Melody Lane Inspired and today we're going to be making a fun card that's going to use a few items from the recent Spring Flowers Mystery Box. So I'm going to use one of the sheets here from the In Bloom Pink Iron On. This was in the Spring Flowers Mystery Box and then I'm also going to be using a new mat because there's nothing like using a new mat but we got three of the new standard grip mats in that mystery box. And actually, I guess I'm using three items from it because it also came with the premium fine point blade and we're going to be using that to cut the project. So this project is the double diamond pop-up card and I'm going to be doing it as a Mother's Day card, but you can easily just change the sentiment on it and you can use it for all sorts from birthdays, congratulations, uh, thinking of you, condolences. It's just a really pretty card with some floral. I love using iron on on a card. It's nice and easy to attach small pieces. So let's go ahead and get into this card. So here is the card that we're going to be making, the double diamond pop-up card. And the part that is light pink is actually going to be the floral iron on. And then we also made an envelope to go ahead and go with this card too. And as you can see here, I have the Happy Mother's Day, and that's going to be attached to that. And I actually used the new text warping to go ahead and warp the, the word mother there. If you haven't played with the, the text warping, I highly suggest you do. It is a benefit of access, but if you're not access, you can still play with it to see it. Now I've checked it's the right machine, the Maker 3, so we are ready to make it. And I am going to be using the mat for each different layer, so I'm going to choose on mat here and continue. And as soon as I hit make it, I realized, wait a minute, I forgot to attach these. As you see, it's just going to put the words, but they weren't attached to anything. I know I did have these attached, but then I play with my words, and then I just forgot to reattach them. So I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit, just so there's a little bit more room at the bottom to write. So now I'm just going to choose the text and choose the rectangle and hit attach there. And then I'm going to do the same over here. Now it was a little hard to grab the rectangle because it was so close to the text. So just go ahead, grab your mouse, and you can just scroll across both of them, and then hit attach. And now it's going to go ahead and write that text on that. So now we can go ahead and go back to cutting the project. Okay, much better. So now we can go ahead and continue here. Now for all of my layers, except for the iron-on layer, we're all going to be using medium cardstock. So we can go ahead and just select the medium cardstock on this page. And here it's letting me know for the first step, it's going to have me load my pink pen into clamp A. So we have our brand new Cricut mat here. There's nothing more satisfying than a new Cricut mat. Now I'm just using my Cricut cardstock here. Start with the white, so I'm just going to put that on there. I'm going to hit it with the Cricut brayer. I might be slightly obsessed with this thing. It's really satisfying and I like to go over my projects with it. It gives that even pressure across it. So I'm going to be using these two Cricut glitter gel pens to write on this and I'm using the Kelly green and the neon pink. I love sparkle, anything sparkle I love to add and these new Cricut formula gel pens write so good. So it's letting me know to load the pink pen into slot A. So I'm just going to push it down until it clicks and close it. And then we are ready to load our mat. Go ahead and give it the go. Now we sped this up to five times the speed so it doesn't actually write this quick. But for the sake of the video, speed things along. Now it's flashing. Let me know we can go on to the next step, which it's telling me on my screen to go ahead and put the green pen in. And give it the go again. No, this didn't work out exactly as I expected. So I'm going to show you actually what to do if this does happen. So as you can see, my green did not write. <laughs> it didn't write. I might not have had it pushed down far enough. Ah, I didn't. I didn't have it pushed down far enough. So how am I going to fix that? Well, we are going to have the machine go again. But if we unload it and put it back in, it'll never get to the exact same spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the blade out. 
because I don't need it. Now all I need to do is actually write with the green again. So I've took everything out. There's nothing in here. So the machine's going to think it's writing and it thinks it's going to cut when it gets to the cutting point. But I'm just going to go ahead and let the machine go through what it needs to until it gets to the point to add the green pen and then I will put the green pen in. So at this point, just hit go. So right now it's just ghost writing. The machine thinks it's writing, but this is a way to do it. And I actually love when things don't go as planned during your project because it's a learning lesson and it happens to everyone. So we can see, hey, what can we do? Do we need to take that, unload that and throw it away? Absolutely not. It's definitely salvageable. Just let it think it's writing with the pink. And then when it gets to the green, we'll go ahead and put that in and we'll leave the blade out and then we'll have it as we wanted. Okay, it's flashing again, letting us know it's time for the next step. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this pen in, push it down until it clicks down there, and then let's give it the go. And can you see the sparkle? It's so pretty. First my mother, forever my friend. Isn't that the truth? And then I left a little room down here to be able to write on it. But it turned out so pretty. Now this is the part we're going to be doing the iron on for. So we're just going to go ahead and choose everyday iron on here as my base material. And then here it's letting me know, make sure your mirror is in the shiny side is face down of the iron on. So I'm just going to go over here and click edit on my mat and click mirror down here in the bottom left corner. That way it is mirrored and we are ready to go ahead and cut. And for all the other pieces, we're gonna do just like we did the first one where we're gonna choose the medium cardstock. And as it tells us on Design Space, we are going to make sure that the shiny side is down for the iron-on. So we're gonna put this side down. this over and go ahead and pull. Iron on off and then I'm going to go ahead and take my, oops, take my Cricut weeding tool here. Your tool is sharp so be very careful. I like to go in at an angle and then go ahead and grab a hold of it. And there we go. See how easily that weeded. And then I'm gonna set this to the side. It's like to have a tray I like to use for my projects to collect all my little pieces in. There we go. And it's letting me know to use my single scoring wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and load this in clamp B. And as you can see, the go is flashing again, which lets us know to load the fine point blade. Took my Cricut spatula to pull these off and look what I seen stuck at the back. That's a little piece to my flower. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in the box. Lift it up a little bit. And then once you get it under, you just do a slight rocking motion with your wrist comes right off. I have to switch out to the scoring wheel again. There we go. So that is the envelope for the card. Let's put that to the side. Now we have all of our pieces done, so I'm going to start assembling these. Now you could take and cut this down, and you could put them on one by one. You could use the mini press. I'm going to actually use the Easy Press 3. 
I went ahead and grabbed my pressing mat for my Easy Press. Now I'm using the Easy Press 3 so I can go ahead and use my Cricut Heat app. I'm just going to choose my transfer material, which will be Everyday Iron On. And then I'm going to choose cardstock for what it is applied to. Now it's letting me know to set it to 280 degrees. You're going to preheat it for 5 seconds, press for 30, and then make sure it's cool before you peel it. Now all I have to do is hit send settings to the Easy Press at the bottom, and it's going to go ahead and send that to the machine. If you're using another Easy Press, just go to cricut.com slash heat guide, and it'll give you the directions there. As you can see, the light on the Easy Press is red, and once we get down to temperature, it is going to go ahead and turn green. I'm going to go ahead and do the five second preheat on it. And then I'm going to line up these. Oh, we are finished with that, I think. Let's make sure. Just gonna let those cool. There we go, and there is the piece. Doesn't that look pretty? So pretty. I love using iron on on cards. Now I'm gonna lay out the rest of the pieces to press. Now we can go ahead and cut these down. Now here I'm just taking my pieces of iron-on and I'm just placing them right over the cardstock so they're centered. That way when I take my easy press, place it on top, I won't move it, I won't move it around. I'm just going to place it straight down and then all those pieces should just stay centered as they are. Alright, now we got a little beep and it's green now so we are ready to go ahead and press this on on here and let it do its work make sure we get it make sure you get all of them covered set down and Now we're just going to let them cool to the touch, that one, when it's cool, you just go ahead and peel it off, and there it is. Go. Now we got our little tray and we are ready to start assembling this card. So first we are going to figure out the folds in here, which that honestly is going to be the trickiest part on about putting this card together. So we're going to go start here and we're going to take the two end pieces and we're going to go ahead and fold those in on your score lines. Do the same here. And then there is another, hard to see in the camera, but there's another line that goes straight across here. So we're going to also fold in there. were all valley folds and now we're going to go ahead and start we're going to fold that back and that one now there's another line going across here we're going to go ahead and fold along that line and now you can already see here the fold that we're going to have so we're going to do that for each 
each part there. Fold there, and you're just gonna do that to each. So it basically has four quadrants that you're gonna do this to. Just have this last one to do. We'll do it that way, then we're gonna flip and do the one across here. This is the card here. So then we can go ahead and start gluing on our pieces that we're going to be putting on. Because they're just stuck glue dots. You can use glue, whatever you like. I have a lot of glue dots, so I want to use one of those. So I'm just taking my glue. not going to see too much of because I'm going to have flowers over this part. put on there. Doesn't the iron on look so pretty on there? I love that. And great thing about this card is it stands up too. So now we just have to go to the other side. And then this is the side that our sentiment's going to go on. So we have the hat Stick it on. We have these little flowers to put together here. Now for these, we want them to offset. So you're just gonna put it so these are in the middle of each different petal. I'm just going ahead and pulling these up a little and just just to give it some, some depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and take and bend up the petals of this piece. And now I have my inner flower. I have these little green pieces, like leaves that are gonna stick out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these to the back of the flower. I'm just gonna put a little glue right here where it's gonna stick. I'm just gonna go around the flower doing that. Okay, now I went ahead and got those little pieces glued on the back. Now we are ready to go ahead and glue this one. There we go. And then that's gonna go on there like that. So now we're just gonna make the other flower. And there we go. And I'm going to put this on iron on. So glue dots are like a great thing to do. Glue itself isn't going to stick to the iron on. So it's a perfect time to use those glue dots if you have them. I'm just going to stick 
And there we go. I think that's so pretty. And it just screams spring. And then when we turn it around, happy Mother's Day, first my mother forever, my friend. It's so sparkly. Isn't that pretty? And then they can set it up. I mean, you can put it on display. It stands up easily. And then you just fold those down just like so. Okay, now that we got the card done, we're just gonna go ahead and fold our envelope here. Okay, so now we folded the card and we can go ahead and you can just put the card. Just like that and you could have also for the front of it if you wanted it to write on there you could have definitely took and put the pen in and had it right and then you are able to mail it in this too so you have something that fits and then they open it they see the pretty card and then flip it over and it has their mother's day so if you did, if you were lucky enough to be one of the few because it sold out so quick to get the Spring Flowers Mystery Box, you have this iron on and can do something similar. And it's so pretty and spring. It's like a work of art. You can just leave this sitting out and it's beautiful. And if you wanted to put, a, oh, you know what I'm thinking? You know what would be really nice? Photos. What if you put photos? You could cut out the photos and then have them put on these two pieces too. And then because what mom or grandma or aunt or Mimi or whoever doesn't love to put out photos, right? So you set this up and it's like a work of art and it's photo and it's got your photos on it. That is, that is a win-win. I love that idea actually. So cute. If you have multiple kids, you could cut and put four different pictures on. You could do a picture of them young versus a, with a picture of them like now or however, but there's lots of different possibilities for it. So thank you guys for joining us. If you go ahead and give us the like and the subscribe, we'd appreciate it. Um, this project and over a thousand other projects are available to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash Melody Lane. And that starts at just $2 a month. And for $2 a month, you get not only access to that, but you get access to our amazing, so fun, 24 seven Melody Lane crafting Zoom. So what is that exactly? Well, it's a Zoom where you can craft at home and then you go in and you talk to other crafters, you make good friends, um, we did a murder mystery party in there this weekend, and that was so much fun. I was Mimi. I was a movie star. And I kept thorough notes, and I did not even come close to, like, getting the right answer. But it was so fun, and we're going to do another of those. We have crafty hangouts each month that we do in there. So go ahead and check us out at patreon.com slash Melody Lane. A special thank you always to our awesome admins, our supporters, you guys, the ones who are watching our videos. Give us a comment. Let us know what do you think. Let us know if you make it. Let us know, post in our different Facebook groups. Go to Cricut Design Space on Facebook and if you make this variation of the card, I would love to see them. What do you do with it? So until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your week. Happy crafting and we will see you next time. Bye.